Hi, Chad here with Purple Car Life. You can see we've got something to build today. It's a little bit of a test here because I'm retesting the microphones that didn't work very well at Rural King. I believe it was interference with their intercom and uh, walkie-talkie system. So I'm just testing it here inside to make sure that works while we assemble this new spreader. If you watched the video a few days ago, you saw I got pretty winded walking the 20,000 square feet of our front yard pushing 200 pounds of the limestone in the front yard. So I saw this was on sale at Rural King. It was $59.99. So Jennifer and I went, we picked it up, and we're going to see how easy it is to assemble and then kind of our first impression of it. One of the nice things right off the bat, this does hold 85 pounds of material. So much better than the 40 pounds I kept putting into the smaller hopper of the Earthway. Uh, the full 50 pound bags that I applied would have fit into this spreader. So let's give it a look. So as you can see, I've got my AgriFab 85 pound tow broadcast spreader completely assembled. It wasn't difficult. It took just under an hour to do. It would go much faster if I were doing a second one because you kind of have the idea for the process. So a couple tips for you if you're just getting started. Watch the video the whole way through first and then go back and watch it a second time and pause as you go through the steps that I've completed here. Second tip, it says in the instructions you only need one wrench and a pair of pliers. For me, I would recommend you get two 7 16th inch wrenches. If one is a gear or ratcheting wrench, I think that's a huge help. You do still need pliers. I would also recommend you get a normal sized flat bladed screwdriver that'll help with some of the cotter pins. So just a couple tips before you get started. Hopefully those help you out. Hope you enjoy the video. This box was actually opened at Rural King, so I've had the advantage of already looking through at all the parts. The staff at Rural King actually took the manual out. They looked at the entire parts list. They counted the parts just to make sure that everything was in there. So that's one great thing. I've already seen the instructions. I see that it only requires a 7 16 inch wrench and pliers. I brought up 7 16 inch gear wrench. So I've got ratcheting on one end that'll help if I have to turn a nut onto a bolt. I brought pliers, both regular and needle nose, and I brought a screwdriver just because you never know. So there is an instruction manual, but there is also a quick start guide. This is the AgriFab 85 pound tow spreader, model 45-0530. We're gonna go ahead and assemble it. And we're going to, just like we did on the Earthway spreader, We'll flip the box over and use it as a platform for our tools and to build. For me, it makes it easier if everything's laid out around me. So I've got my instructions right here, all the components to my left and my right, my hardware's on the right. Step one, take the hopper upside down and we're going to mount this slider plate onto it. They call it the flow plate goes with the bumps up. Step two is attaching the control cable. There's a little bit of a bump here and that's going to go through a little hole in the bottom so it gets fed in just like that. And then you can see this little clip goes right into the slot. Snaps into both sides. And then we can see that by adjusting this, that's what slides that. Next, on the axle, you can see there's a longer end and a shorter end. You can kind of identify that just by looking, but also with the offset of the gearbox, the longer end comes out, you can see to that side of the offset. And we're gonna set this aside for a minute. So I looked ahead at the next step and saw it'd be beneficial to get a second wrench because I'll be putting bolts with nuts through these brackets. And it just is easier for me to use two wrenches rather than a wrench and a pair of pliers. Now I've set these up exactly like it showed in the instructions. So I've got the long side of the tube on my left, your right, I've got the curve of these brackets facing away from me, and I've got this plate 
that holds it together so that the flat section is coming up and out. So I moved the camera to kind of give you my point of view. And I've got my wrenches here, both 7 sixteenths. You can see how having the ratchet and gear wrench is really helpful. It did say not to make everything too tight, so we'll just go at this pace for now. Okay, now I've got those bolts tightened up, still not super tight. Next step is to put these plugs in the ends of the tubes, which you can just push with your thumbs. Next, onto the axle, we're gonna push the bolt end in. And you can see that kind of lines up and slides through. Same on this side. So you do need to rotate them until you get them to line up and then just push them through. If you have any trouble, you can always use your pliers. Squeeze them through like that, just gently. If you watch the Earthway video, there was an instance where I had to use two sets of pliers to get them to go through evenly. Our next step is to mount the hopper. So I'm gonna put the shaft of the spreader like that. But now we need to flip it because we actually need to put the bolts through. So we want a bolt with a small washer down through a hole, the same top and bottom, or left and right if you've got yours sitting upright. And it goes through the center hole, not the outside hole. I'm gonna start a nut on that. There are the two bolts with washers inside the hopper, one, two. Now I don't want to over tighten those. We'll do the same here on the bottom. Our next step is to put on the drive wheel. We want to put a spacer, then a washer, then this wheel, you can see it has a hole through the wheel to go through the axle with this pin. So we need to line up this hole with this hole. And then slide the pin down through. So there you can see what that looks like. Got the pin down through. Here's that spacer and the washer. Now I like to take a screwdriver and start separating that pin. Makes it a little bit easier to bend. And then I can take the needle nose pliers, bend it one way and the other way. Now this is the drive wheel so you can see when this wheel turns, it causes the spreader to spin. Now we're gonna put the free spinning wheel on. So we'll put the washer, spacer and the wheel. According to the instructions we want to get another washer and then the pin. And it does go through just like on the other side I use my screwdriver to start to get that cotter pin separated. And then I can use the you know, nose pliers to bend it a little further. One of the steps I did not do when this was upside down was put the pin through here. There are two pins in the set. You wanna use the one that has the longer tail because that's going to agitate whatever you're spreading. The next step 
is installing this control tube and the hitch tube. The hitch tube has two sides to it. One, the holes are further spaced apart. The other, the holes are closer. You want the side that's closer and it's going to go below this frame. Then this tube goes above just like that. So we'll grab two more bolts. Now for me, I'm finding that the plastic spreader plate is in the way of this bolt going through. So what I'm having to do is kind of bend it up around the head of that bolt to allow that bolt to go through. Then put our narrow side through to the locking nuts. Again, this is where it's an advantage to have two wrenches and one of them be a ratcheting wrench. In my opinion, impossible to do with a pair of pliers. So I'm going to insert a tip in the beginning of this video recommending two 7 16 inch wrenches. We're getting close to being done here. Our next step is to attach this control and we're going to put the carriage head bolt through the control, through the hole in the control tube, and then a nut on this side. And then there is a plug to put in the end of this control pipe. The last step is to put our hitch pieces on here like this. Both of mine, the holes are painted shut, but that shouldn't be a problem. And obviously you want to put them so that they cradle the pipe. And then the last pieces left are the hitch pin and the pin that holds it in place. So here we've got our AgriFab 85 pound broadcast spreader completely assembled. I'll do a full review on this after I get to use it. There's a couple concerns right off the bat. I can tell it's not commercial quality. I'm a little bit worried about this control lever and the dispensing mechanism in the bottom of the hopper. It, it just doesn't slide really easily, which makes you push harder on this control lever, and I'm afraid that's gonna be a weak point in the system. Um, other than that, it looks like it's a pretty good machine. We'll give it a try and tell you what we think. Make sure you click that like button if any part of this video helped you out or entertained you in any way, and we hope to see you again the next time. Comment down below if you've had experience with this particular AgriFab or any AgriFab spreader and what your thoughts were. Thanks, we'll see you again the next time.